What's up, gang? Comic Man Andy here, ready to talk to you guys about packing and shipping comic books. Whether you've been in the game for 40 years, just getting started, or stuck somewhere in the middle like me, you're sure to find some value in today's video. So hang tight. Let's get into this. All right, guys, let me start this off by saying there's more than one way to skin a cat. There really isn't any true perfect way to ship comic books. If there was, we would all be doing the exact same thing every time and there would never be any damaged books. So do the best you can with what you have, but always strive for better and always look for feedback from everybody. There's always room to grow, right? Let's get in to some of the items that I'm going to be using to pack and ship this four book lot. So, I mean... To start, I do recommend some sort of water barrier, water defense. Like, uh, you can get creative with this. You can use plastic things. I prefer to use Tyvek mailers, and uh, you guys will see why here in a little bit. Then you're going to need some inserts for that extra protection. You're going to need a mailer of some sort, some sort of mailer. I know there's a few name brands out there. Then, uh, you know, packing tape. You're going to want packing tape. You don't want high quality packing tape. You're gonna need a couple of different types of painter's tape. We'll get into some of the details in a little bit on why I use what I like to use. Don't forget to have a tape measure laying around. It's always best to verify the dimensions of your package. <laughs> Goes without saying, you'll need some writing implements as well. A couple of markers, a couple of pens. It's always really handy to have a uh, box cutter or a razor blade laying around because sometimes you got to get back into that package and fix some things if you forgot to put a piece of paperwork in there or if you find you left a package out, having a razor blade, a sharp razor blade handy so you don't do any damage to any of the packing materials and can get that tape uh, cut through pretty quickly and easily. And, of course, some scissors as well can be handy. And then last but not least, you're going to need some comic books of some type to pack and ship. So here it is. Here's the packing and shipping method that we use on a regular basis for any of the auctions that we do, trading with friends, or just gifting out books to the local community. Not just local community, but the community throughout the world. All right, guys, let's get started with the books. Grab the books that you're looking to ship. Make sure that you swap the sides of where the spines are at. Now, I always like to have the covers facing inward. Get them all nice and pretty. One of the things that I did forget to mention at the beginning as far as having some easy things laying around is extra boards. And what do I mean by extra boards? Reduce, reuse, recycle. Don't throw your boards out. Your extra boards that are past due for your collection or no longer in use, don't throw them out. This is exactly the perfect purpose for those extra boards because they serve as a nice protective layer to prevent razor blades from getting through and getting to those books because some people like to use razor blades to open packages and that's a start now we're not going to tape the sides or the top on this because we don't want to create pressure points on anywhere where the spines are at we don't want to roll anything over here we don't want to cause any areas of uh, stress or tension on the actual bags and boards themselves we'll set that aside and next what we're going to do is we're going to grab our water defense. Remember when I said I like to use Tyvek mailers? This is exactly why. And one of the fantastic things about Tyvek mailers is they are very similar to the shape of comic books. And they have those reseal, not resealable, but they have the glue right on there ready to go, which is nice and easy. I like to work with Top's facing that way. I'm just going to tuck them right in. Now, Tyvek is not waterproof. Uh, Tyvek is not waterproof. It's not a water barrier like, like heavy-duty plastic. But Tyvek will definitely do the job if um, a carrier leaves that comic package in a puddle for an hour or two. You know, you got some time before that cardboard gets all the way soaked through. This is also going to help. It's not perfect, but... I do like it. It's a little bit more flexible. The comics fit in here a little bit better, and it's a lot easier than messing with saran wrap or uh, some heavy-duty plastic bags. There are other people out there that ship comic books more than I do that have this water barrier figured out to a T. 
and they have found the perfect bags to use for thousands and thousands of packages every month. I just like the convenience of using a Tyvek mailer. So as you can see here, I just continue to squeeze the air out nice and easy. Another reason why those backer boards in there are really helpful is I'm not putting direct pressure on the book. It's on the backer board. And then we just pull our little tape peel. We can get it here. Right off of there, I'm gonna go ahead and lightly pull and roll and flatten the air out again, and then it's sealed. But next, notice we've got some dead space here, we've got some dead space there, and dead space equals dead comic books. You never want dead space ever at all. Dead space equals dead comic books. So what we're gonna do, remember a top is over here, that's where I left the extra space there to recognize where my top was. I'm gonna gently slide those comic books all the way down to the bottom to use up as much space down there, to kind of feel with my fingers. And then what I'm gonna do here is grab me some two inch painter's tape, or close to two inch, this is just shy of two inches. And I'm just gonna use painter's tape. Now we talked about how I was gonna get into <coughs> why I use the brands that I do. And one of the reasons why I choose this brand of painter's tape is I just get it started right there to go and then make sure that that's connected. So this is the Scotch 3M original painter's tape. You kind of see down in there, Scotch 3M original. The reason why I stick with the Scotch painter's tape is simply because it has a better ability to release from materials than some other brands of painter's tape. Now, what do you mean, Andy? Well, any of you guys that have purchased comic books have line, online have eventually run into that really dark blue painter's tape. I don't know what brand that is, but the really, really dark hue, you'd notice it. It's a big difference from the Scotch to this other brand. The really dark hue painter's tape uh, actually sticks to everything and it's a nightmare. And it, I've damaged comic books trying to peel them off the backer boards and all this other stuff. So I like to stick with Scotch because literally, I mean, it has a much better, much better ability to peel off of materials, a much better release, uh, a lot less damaging, a lot less hassle. So there we go. There's pace, basically the first step right there. I don't worry too much about the end flap down there because there's no dead space down here now on the top or the bottom. Less opportunity for anything to move or slide around in transit. So we're going to move on to the next step. Next step going to be those filler boards that we use. Now, whether you're using a Gemini or a Uline or any other brand, make sure you grab some backer, not some backer boards, but some filler boards that are cut to the size of the mailer that you're gonna use. And what we wanna do here is most people, before we even get to this step, most people have already taped the books and already gotten ready to put them in a Gemini or another mailer and send them on their way. What we wanna do is we wanna uh, actually create traction inside of these to prevent something from slipping or sliding because remember these books aren't completely locked in yet there's no super amount of pressure keeping them from moving around and what we're going to do is we're going to create we're going to create some traction with the um just under one and a half inch painter's tape and i don't really measure anything out all we're trying to do is literally just just create some traction with there you don't have to use a ton and we're doing that as an extra element. Now think of it as a fail safe. We're creating fail safes within the package and then I'm just gonna line it up as best as I can and set it right down. Once again, squeeze all the air out. And I'm gonna look, make sure I've got enough gap down here, make sure I've got enough gap up here. And actually, as you noticed, I have almost no gap here. So that means I am gonna very carefully lift up and this is why I like the Scotch brand of tapes because it releases a lot better. It just creates just enough traction. And then I'm gonna align a little bit better so I have a little bit more gap on either side. And then I'm gonna drop again and reseat. So see, now I've created a little bit more barrier there. If you can see on the camera, and a little bit more barrier here, or a little bit less. Kind of balanced it out. There we go. All we're doing is creating traction with that tape and we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. And this also makes it much easier on me when I go to finish packing. And some of you guys are gonna be like, Andy, this is way too much stuff, way too much material. Granted, it's it's not, it's not supposed to be a shipping method that's cheap. We don't, I don't use the term cheap 
I don't use the term quick, and I don't necessarily use the term easy when it comes to packing and shipping comic books because I want my books to be shipped in exactly the same way I want to receive them. And that's as efficiently and as safely as possible. So now we've got a gap in here, a gap in there, and on both sides we've got a gap in here. And now we've created traction so that those that package in the middle there isn't really going to slide anywhere. What, what we're going to do next is we're going to add that typical fail safe that most people do. The painter's tape on the either side. And I like to stick with the thicker of the um, painter's tapes because you're spread loading the tension. You're spread loading the tension and the pressure that the package will cope with while shipping. And the little bit of tracking that's in there, like I said, it's holding everything in place for me so that I don't have to fight anything sliding around. And don't forget, don't forget to add those pull tabs. Everybody loves those pull tabs. It literally takes a tenth of a second to add that pull tab right there. Now here's what I'm talking about when we added that tape on the end there. There's the tension. We're locking the books in now. Here's the first one right here. We're locking those books in. And as you can see, because of that gap that's in there, none of that tension is being translated to the books inside of the package there. And then we're just going to keep going right around the horn, right around the circle. Here we go. As we keep going, I'm going to make sure that I've got all of the air out so that there's no dead space. Because remember, dead space equals dead comic books, and we do not want that. So I'm going to get the tape underneath there. Make sure all the air is out, fold over, up, provide a little bit of tension, and roll right into that, right into that pull tab, and moving right along. Next one. Same thing with number three. They don't have to be perfect and pretty. They just have to be functional. And it just has to be able to carry that tension because, like we said, now with number three, we are really, really starting to lock those books into place so they're not going to go anywhere. And sure, you can see sometimes a little tail hanging out here. That package is not part of the support element for the comic books. That's just part of the little envelope lip. Here comes number four. And you're like, man, Andy, this is going to take a really long while. Well, it's only taking me a really long time because... We're explaining it, we're trying to keep the camera in focus, and we're trying to make sure that uh, we have everything we need right here. There we go. Pull tabs are good. Tension points are good. One, two, three, four spots of tension that are keeping those books locked in place. It is absolutely gorgeous. I love the way this works. Some people are going to say, hey, why don't you just use two? Sure, yeah, I could use just two and speed it up a little bit, but... What if one of those pull tabs, what if one of those anchors fail and you're left with one? There's only one anchor. There's nothing holding these together but the one so that it can slide around. If one of these three fails, there's still three other backing it up. And then if two fail, there's still two. You get what I'm saying? You're creating fail safes within the package. Whether it's a $5 book or a $5,000 book, I'd still want to do the best I completely can. Next, we are ready for the mailer. All right, so we're choosing to use a U-Line S-165. We're going to use the U-Line 165 for this. These inserts are cut specifically for this size mailer, and you're going to see how quickly this comes together. And it's at this point I would be adding stickers, paperwork, anything else of that nature, and this is a perfect time to actually pause this is an actual whatnot package, so we're going to take a pause here. We're going to print out all the paperwork. We're going to get everything packed up here with stickers and everything and get it good and ready to go. Here we go, guys. We're going to throw in some uh, cool stickers that we've had done up in the past with the Comic Man Andy logo, but we're also going to make sure we throw in some really cool Tell Valhalla Project stickers. Thank you to those guys at Tell Valhalla Project. We'll continue supporting them because, like we've said, the mission for 2022 is to support Mission 22. So there's the stickers. Make sure we throw in our paperwork with my terrible handwriting and my terrible signature. There we go, and we're going to fold it back up. Super easy. And then, as I go through my little process of taping, I just like to put the weight down there. Grab a little piece just to, just to hold it all together. And I'm trying to make it as square as possible. Sometimes these things kind of fold funky, but 
I like that these fit into a lot of different size mailboxes. This is a much smaller format, much like the Gemini. I think the Gem Gemini is just a little bit longer. These are both about the same width. They fit into a lot of mailboxes. And like we said, with these U-line mailers, these U-line mailers, the outer mailer itself is 200 pound test. And then the inside inserts that we use are also 200 pound test. You're getting almost 400 pound test worth of armor for those comic books of cardboard protection for those comic books above and beyond Gemini, in my opinion. And these Uline mailers with the cost of products nowadays, these Uline mailers and Gemini mailers are about the same price. Gemini has gone up that much in price now. And I always like to take my thumb, just make sure that quality, quality tape is sticking on there really good. And we didn't even talk about packing tape yet. We did a little bit. I like to stick with the super heavy duty scotch, uh, heavy duty shipping and packaging tape. I feel like this stuff is gold when it comes to packaging up books or anything that's going through the mail. It always seems to be a lot thicker. The adhesive seems to stick a lot better once you get that locked in there. And so much so that I feel like just that one section of tape is going to be more than enough. Next. Let's do the finishing touches. So we'll get our blank side here. And through the magic of thermal printers, we're gonna use our Dymo 4XL uh, label maker. And uh, we're gonna simulate just throwing a label right on there. That's how super easy those are. They were worth every penny, absolutely love them. And then if I had forgotten to mention it, we like to use extra stickers. These are super cost effective, super affordable. Get them through Amazon. Look them up. Look them through. Look them up through any of the vendors and see if you can find better pricing. I tend to go through Amazon for a lot of these stickers just because they're so convenient with our account there. And always make sure to add an additional on the back. That is it. That is the basic packing and shipping method that we use for anywhere from one up to eight, maybe 10 raw comic books, depending on the size and shape and thickness, because uh, those uh, Tyvek mailers will hold, I believe, up to eight or nine, really kind of dependent on the books and the size. But that's it. Let's move to the next view. Okay, gang, a couple of things that I missed at the very beginning that are super important was one, make sure you have a very trustworthy scale. Even a $30 or $40 scale off of eBay will do just fine. Always make sure that you're a half an ounce to an ounce over. Don't go under on your weight. Going under on your weight tends to make things kind of awkward and kind of weird when uh, somebody else has got to pay for the extra. But having a scale is paramount to, to packing and shipping comic books. And automatic tape dispensers. I know there are tape dispensers out there that co just constantly will whip out tape as you grab it. Um, I'm not into that avenue yet i haven't kind of dipped into that so just the little eight or nine dollar tape gun from the uh, home improvement store and then i just pull painters tape right off the rolls and i'm fine with that but really guys um scotch brand original painters tape is really where it's at it releases a lot better i've had much better luck with this if you guys uh, have ever received a package with the dark painters tape you'll know what i'm talking about that's really hard to pull off without ripping or tearing into something and always remember reduce reuse Recycle. Don't throw out your backer boards. Your backer boards are perfect additional armor when you're packing and shipping comic books. And these U-line mailers, these U-line mailers tend to be reusable more often than not. They're much more durable than Gemini mailers. I'm hoping that people that have received these from us are using them an additional time or two. That's reducing waste and reducing the overall cost for a lot of other people. They're getting that benefit. So uh, that's why I'm gonna stick with using these mailers as they, even they even if they continue to go up in price, we're gonna keep using those ones. We're really happy with those. But yeah, that's what we got. What do you guys think? Leave a comment down below. Obviously, there's no perfect way to ship books. If there was, we would all be doing it and we would never have any damaged books. This is what I've kind of created. It's an algamation algamation of several different shipping methods from several different YouTubers out there in the community and kind of based on the experiences that I've had over the years buying and, and picking up books from eBay, whatnot, other locations, Instagram, other websites, and having some of those bad experiences and making sure that I'm not sending those bad experiences out to other people. In conclusion, gang, 
do the best you can with what you have and know that you can always strive for more and be open to feedback from everybody in the community. That's our quick packing and shipping method. And some of you guys might say it's not quick, but this is this is what we're sticking with. This is what we're going with. Please remember to leave a comment down below. Tell us what your favorite tip or trick is when it comes to packing and shipping comic books. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and be ready for this comic collecting adventure and journey. And you guys know how I'm going to do this like we do every week. I'm going to go peace out. I'm going to go piggies out. I'm going to catch you all on the flip side for the next one. And remember the most important part all day, every day. You are enough. Be original and take care of each other. Peace out. Be excellent to each other. And party on, dudes!